Guys, Nintendo spend a lot of time doing reboots and sequels, but it's pretty rare that we see a brand new game with brand new characters. Yes, but that's exactly what we have with the ink splashing chaos of Splatoon. Oh, you're a kid now, you're a squid now, you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid. <laughs> Splatoon's a bit tricky to describe. When I first saw this Wii U game, it seemed to be all about third-person multiplayer shooting, and that is a part of it. Obviously, instead of shooting bullets, you're shooting ink. When you get down to it, though, inking the environment is actually more important than splattering your opponents. But before we talk multiplayer, the single-player mode is actually a better place to start. Affirmative. Single-player works much like many Nintendo platformers, with a hub world linking you to various levels, which drip-feed the core mechanics to you. The most interesting one is how your ink gun works. Instead of picking up boxes of ammo, you can transform into a squid and suck up fresh ink while swimming around in it. Yes, it is such a clever reloading mechanic. Absolutely, especially as swimming in the ink has so many other gameplay benefits. You can swim up walls that you've covered in ink, and generally, you're a lot less visible in the ink. So you can use it to hide from enemies. Yeah, the ink really becomes your safe place, doesn't it? If you've been hurt by enemy ink, then swimming in your own colour quickly recharges your health. Plus, you move faster in it, so you can use it as a way to dodge enemy fire. And I loved how you can always see just how much ink you have left in your backpack container. So there's no need to show an ammo counter in the heads-up display. That smart, clean game design. Hmm. They've also squeezed a lot of gameplay out of the ink mechanic. As well as the usual enemies shooting ink at you, more creative obstacles include these ink-mopping robots that erase the paths you're trying to travel along. Oh, and I particularly liked the spongy platforms that you can enlarge with ink. Yeah, I was surprised at how much depth they crammed into the single-player mode. It comes with all the usual Nintendo trimmings, like epic three-stage boss encounters. And naturally, there are collectibles. For this game, it's orbs that you can spend on weapon upgrades. They are a bit grindy, though. I was half a dozen levels in before I could afford my first rapid-fire upgrade. But when a game looks and plays this well, I don't mind a bit of grinding. Oh, and the lighting and ink reflections. It's easily one of the best-looking Wii U games out there. But let's move on to the multiplayer. Hmm. Considering how few online-focused games Nintendo has released in the past, this is a big step forward for the publisher. Finding and joining games is a speedy and painless experience. And how good is that little squid minigame? While you're waiting for the lobby to fill with players on the TV, you can be playing away on the gamepad. Yes, I want minigames for all my lobby and loading screens from now on, please. And it's such a great use of the Wii U gamepad, too. Back to the online play itself. The default mode is a 4 versus 4 team game, with the winning team being whichever one paints more of the map with their ink. It's easy to make the mistake of trying to take out opponents, which, of course, you can do. But really, it's the map you have to focus on. Affirmative. Ideally, an effective team should have a mix of players using ink rollers as well as guns. The rollers can lay down thick paths of ink, which not only count towards the team's ink coverage, but these paths can also be used as highways for the rest of the team to speed along in squid form. Yeah, it's a great feeling when your team's really working together to own that critical middle ground on a map. And there's such a clear feeling of momentum in a match when everything you can see is splattered in your team's ink. I agree, this is heaps of fun when your team is working and clicking together, but I had a lot of games where we really struggled. And I put that down to a lack of voice chat. I just really wanted to be able to talk to my team. Yeah, I know what you mean, but I think the aim of inking the map is straightforward enough that this doesn't really need voice chat. I have to say, though, I really got stuck into this. There's such a great sense of progression as you unlock new weapons and wearable gear with their own buffs. Plus, when you hit level 10, you get access to the Splat Zones mode, which is a bit like King of the Hill, but it's so much fun! 
Overall, guys, I thought this could have had a few more options to flesh it out, like maybe bots, maybe a few more online options, but, you know, this is such a clever game. Those inking mechanics are fantastic. I'm going to give it, wait for it, three and a half out of five rubber chickens! <laughs> yes! Well, for me, this game delivered on every front. The art style and the colours are just so vibrant, and there's a tremendous amount of depth here if you put the time in. I'm giving it four and a half out of five rubber chickens. All hail the chickens! All, All hail, hail the chickens! All hail the chickens! <laughs> and Carrie. And Carrie. All hail Carrie. Guys, it's no secret that I was a huge fan of the first Splatoon on Wii U. Its unique spin on shooters, bright art style and weird squid universe had me hook, line and sinker. And now the Inklings are back on the Switch with a fresh coat of paint. Or is it ink? Oh, it doesn't matter, let's get splatting! <laughs> Just like in the first Splatoon, you begin by creating your own Squid Kid before diving into this post-apocalyptic universe full of strange and stylish sea life. From here, you can jump into arena battles, shop for gear and weapons, try out a few other game modes, or just chill out and inspect the latest fishy fashion trends. Hmm. Hey. Oh, I like that shirt. Stylish. If you played the first game, then it will all seem very familiar. Weapons still unlock as you level up, gear has slots for perks to upgrade, in fact, much of the game feels almost identical. Fortunately, though, this is actually a good thing, especially when it comes to the all-important battles. Affirmative, Rad. Starting out, you'll only have access to the game's iconic Turf War, a mode where teams must try to cover as much of the floor in their team's coloured ink as possible. At the end of each match, the map is analysed and the team that inked the most floor space is proclaimed the victor. And in my opinion, Turf War is still easily the most enjoyable and forgiving mode to play. Dividing everyone's attention between inking the floor and eliminating opponents takes a lot of that competitive pressure off. And the best part is, it means everyone can contribute in some way. For example, I love diving into the fray of battle and trying to chase down opponents. Meanwhile, I like to hang back, you know, fill in some of the spots that the rest of the team might have missed. And often doing this would mean the difference between victory and defeat. No, oh, thank you very much. Once you've levelled up your inkling enough, you'll be able to take part in ranked battles, which are more about objective-based modes. Uh, Rainmaker is a spin-on Capture the Flag. Splatterzone is more like King of the Hill. And Tower Control sees teams riding a tower into the enemy's base to claim victory. These modes all require more teamwork and strategy, especially since losing too many games in a row will cause you to lose rank. <laughs> The squid manatee! <laughs> I do like the extra competition from Ranked, but I'm not sure I enjoyed these modes as much as regular battle. If I had to pick, I'd probably say Splat Zone stands out as my favourite, because it's essentially just a more focused version of Turf War. Yeah, it is nice to mix things up, but I probably spent more time in regular battles too. Fortunately, if you get tired of competitive play, there's still an entire single player campaign to enjoy. And while it too is very similar to the original game, saving Zapfish, Defeating Octolings, battling bosses. I did not mind this at all. The short, punchy levels are all cleverly designed. Plus, it was great to have a mode to play when I was offline. Did you know the mysterious stranger in hero mode is actually Mari, one of the original Squid Sisters? You'll find there's actually quite a lot of deep lore hidden around the Splatoon universe, if you know where to look. Oh, it's great world building, isn't it? I love how there's always some sort of weird motivation behind each mode. Particularly the newest edition, Salmon Run, a team-based wave mode which sees you employed by a dodgy fishing company to go out on dangerous missions to collect salmon eggs. Ah, oh, Rad, I loved this mode. You and your team have to fight off three waves of enemy salmon, which include tricky mini-bosses that drop golden eggs you'll need to return to a storage unit. It all sounds relatively simple, but there's so much variation to keep you guessing. Weapons are random, the map changes based on the tide, and some of those mini-boss combinations are just brutal. It's exactly what you want from a wave mode to keep you coming back. 
Should you survive and bring in a good haul, the rewards can be quite bountiful, especially as your salary multiplies with consecutive wins. However, there is one oddity in this mode, and that is, it's only available at particular times of the day or week. Uh, my best guess is that they don't want to split the player base and have this eclipsing the standard battles, but if so, it's a peculiar way of going about it. I don't know, Darren. I think it's a really interesting approach. Splatoon already plays around with timed content, switching out maps every couple of hours and throwing crazy Splatfest events on particular dates. So to me, this is just another way to keep my interest levels up. You know, I'm always checking back to see what's new. Yeah, and if the last game taught us anything, it's that community engagement leads to a longer-lasting player base, something a multiplayer-focused game like Splatoon 2 needs to survive. Oh, good point, Goose. Uh, plus, you can play all the modes locally over Wi-Fi, uh, instead of the impractical and featureless split-screen option from the first game. Uh, final thoughts? Overall, Splatoon 2 does play it very safe, only making minor changes to what was obviously a winning formula. And there's enough here to keep fans happy, so I'm gonna give it four out of five rubber chickens. Guys, I just loved being back in this world. Mixing up new maps with old maps, unlocking all sorts of crazy weapons and fashion, plus starting that competitive climb back to S rank is all I need to keep playing. And I'm also keen to see what they add in the future, so I'm giving Splatoon 2 a perfect five out of five rubber chickens. <laughs>